Welcome back. North Carolina Republicans took advantage of their veto-proof majority last night, overriding a veto by the state's Democratic governor to enact a 12-week abortion ban. Both the Senate and House voted along party lines, including now Republican State Representative Tricia Cotham, who switched her party affiliation last month, and that's what gave the supermajority to the GOP to allow this to happen. The new law bans abortion after 12 weeks. There's a 20-week exception for rape and incest and a 24-week exception for life-limiting fetal abnormalities. The law also requires a person seeking an abortion in that first 12 weeks to have an in-person visit with a doctor at least 72 hours before undergoing the procedure. So even uh, within that 12-week period, it's some, uh, some strict provisions to it. Some of the provisions of this new law, including that 12-week ban, are set to take effect as soon as July 1st. Now, the move in North Carolina comes as the debate over access to the abortion pill. Mifepristone is also back in court today. The panel of Republican-appointed judges on the Fifth Circuit heard arguments in the case this afternoon. Their ruling on the nationwide availability of the pill could come down at any time. But honestly, regardless of how this court rules, the case is likely to be appealed to the Supreme Court, unless for some reason this Fifth Circuit rules in the same way that Washington State's federal, uh, that district court judge from Washington State ruled. Uh, but that is unlikely. Shaquille Brewster joins us now from Raleigh, North Carolina. And Shaq, it, it, this, this is happening, and it feels like it's basically the beginning of the 2024 campaign in the Tar Heel State, because everything is on the ballot in 2024. The governor, the state legislature, the presidency, you name it. That's exactly right, Chuck, and that kind of gives you a sense of why Governor Cooper was so aggressive in after vetoing this legislation, going to the districts of Republican Cong or Republican legislature, uh, legislators, uh, trying to convince them to flip their vote. Because although he knew they likely wouldn't change their vote, he knows that this is going to be a political uh, on the political battleground from this point forward. North Carolina now shifting to that 12-week ban, but if you talk to opponents, that number is just uh, is a little bit misleading because of the other provisions of the legislation that really change how abortions are done throughout the state. Uh, Chuck, I spoke to the, act the the Speaker of the House, a Republican Speaker of the North Carolina uh, House of Representatives about the changes in this law. Just listen to a little bit of our conversations because it doesn't only reflect on what has been done so far, but it gives you a hint of what will happen in the future. There were certainly a lot on, on you know, my side of the aisle who felt like a six-week bill, like it's being debated in South Carolina and other states, would be more appropriate. And then, of course, there's some that wanted more weeks than 12. And so the compromise came down to 12 weeks, but also made sure that we had those exceptions in there as well. So that's the bill that we passed. You call this a compromise. Do you think that there's any future legis legislation to come here? Do you think that it can be restricted even more than 12 weeks? So I, what I will say is that for this legislative session, meaning this calendar year and next calendar year, th this will be all the legislation that we adopt on this, on this topic. Do you know what happens at the end of next calendar year? Well, that is when there will be a go new governor elected in this state, perhaps leading to the idea that if there is a Republican who's elected as governor, then right. the supermajority is no longer a factor. And that means you could have some more restrictions similar to what you're seeing South mm. Carolina uh, try to uh, De debate right now with the six-week six right. abortion ban. So more is potentially to come once the actual veto uh, goes away. And uh, we also have the fact that I believe they're going to be redrawing the map, potentially, right? There could be a new map for all, yeah. not just congressional boundaries, but for the state legislature, too, which could also... Look, there's going to be some Republicans who voted for this who are going to be vulnerable, and I would assume... The map drawers are trying to figure that out as well. I mean, this is what makes it feel like uh, quite the convergence of, of, of sort of political fire here. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing with the new maps, I mean, I, I talked to the speaker about this. The governor doesn't necessarily have a veto with that. I mean, just if you step back, the idea that this is a state with a Democratic governor, but a supermajority in the legislature, that just shows you the imbalance of power there, right. the uh, how the maps really work out and what what that looks like electorally. I will say also in terms of the supermajority that Republicans now have in this state, Democrats are pointing out that this may just be the beginning, uh, that there are other issues that 
that will come up while redistricting is not one of them. Things like transgender rights, education mm. reform, uh, yeah. those are things that can come before this uh, this uh, legislature and now be enacted despite the governor issuing his veto. Well, North Carolina is one of those strange, uh, evenly divided states. There's not many swing voters. There's just a very evenly divided red and blue at times, and it is a small, tiny slice of voters that can tip the scales one way or the other. Anyway, uh, Shaquille Brewster on the ground force right. in North Carolina. Shaq, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.